Welcome to the Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, is a licensed loan originator with Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, NMLS 134871. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited. Now in the studio, local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome to the Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 19th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. I'm your host and local mortgage expert, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events and how it can affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that I have on the show. You can go online to themoneyhour.com and the lineup for today show panel conversation with my two guests, Aaron Murphy of ADM Architecture and Forever Home and Dexter Borby of Interman Healthcare. Also, if you're watching my show on my Facebook premiere or YouTube channel, I would like to introduce my producer over at Hubbard Radio, Benny. Hi, Tina. Good to see you again. Good to see you as always. And also my marketing director, Becky. Hi, Tina. Excited for the show. Thank you. I'd like to give a shout out to both of them because without them and everything that they do behind the scenes, this show would not be here. So thank you to Benny and Becky for all that you do. Great information and great guests in studio. For more information on any topic discussed, please feel free to go online and uh, you can reach out to us there at themoneyhour.com. And now let's go ahead and start out the show as we do each week with a little bit of money chat. Money. In Home Alone 2, yes, I know, I'm already using Christmas references, there's a scene where the bellhop, Mr. Hector, swipes Kevin's credit card to learn that the card has been stolen. The gig was up, and Mr. Hector knew it first. Essentially, that is how the market has begun to respond to the Fed's mission. After receiving a weaker CPI last week, and now another inflationary data points, and the PPI coming in lower than expected, the market is seeing a flashing sign that things are no longer longer as it seems. The gift of the peak inflation may have arrived early under a Christmas tree. Remember, this is my house. We must defend it. We've spoken of how dire it is for Powell to retain the Fed's credibility and to ensure that they continue to for the hiking trajectory. It's been on my radar to watch Mr. P might pop up to deter the current market's response and steal back this early Christmas rally. However, As Powell himself has acknowledged, if the data is the one speaking for its own, then this may be a stable positive turn for mortgage interest rates. My favorite part of Home Alone movies was seeking how Kevin would stay one step ahead of the bad guys and obviously the booby trap scenes. Although we don't know how the rest of the movie plays out, we can make sure and prepare for knowledge and whatever is thrown our way. Remember, this house must defend it. Now, the Fed President Mary Daly estimates that the Fed funds rate will get to 5%, meaning 100 basis points, more hikes at a 50 basis point pace. That means that the hike in December, and then there'll be one on February 1st of next year. Pausing is off the table and not even part of the discussion. Rather, they're discussing slowing down the pace. Now, Dallas Fed President Lori Lorgan called the CPI report a welcome relief, but noted more rate increases probably are coming, although at a slower pace. Fed Governor Waller, looking towards the Federal Open Market Committee December meeting, the data of the past few weeks has made him more comfortable considering stepping down to 50 basis point hike. KC Fed President George said, hard to see inflation come down without painful outcomes contraction in the economy and slowdown in the labor market. Now on the housing front, housing starts in October, we're down 4% to a, to 1.4 million in a unit ad, annualized pace. Starts are down almost 9% year over year. Single family starts, which are most important, were down 6% last month and an 855,000 unit pace. They are now down 21% year over year. So while interest rates are higher, 
demand is lower, supply should remain tight. Housing permits, which is the future supply, were down 2.4% last month and at a 1.526 million unit pace and are almost down 10% year over year. Single families were down 3.6% last month, 830,000 units and down 22% year over year. Completions are down 20% from last year to 1.34 million annually. This is close to the amount of households in formations when retired and destroyed homes are considered. There is a big difference between the housing economic drive and the housing investment. Clearly, activity is in a recession, but the low supply environment will continue to support the prices and the supply and demand dynamics because they're the opposite of what we saw in 2007 during the crash. Tina Mitchell here, and that is your money chat. Coming up next in the Money Hour panel conversation with my two guests right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 19th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. I am your host, Tina Mitchell, and your local mortgage expert. It's a great day to talk about money, and that is what the show is all about, how to make money save money so you can have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or more importantly, to connect you with the two guests that I have on the show today. You can go to themoneyhour.com. And now on our show panel conversation, Aaron Murphy of ADM Architecture and Forever Home, and Dexter Borby of Interman Healthcare of Bellevue in Home Care, right here in 1150 AM, KKNW. Excited to have both of you on the show today. Thank you for uh, visiting. Thanks, well, thank you for having us, Tina. Yeah, and let me share a little bit about both of you. Uh, Aaron, I'll go ahead and start out with your uh, bio here. Aaron has 23 plus 23 plus years of experience with both commercial and residential design in Western Washington and has designed well over 2 million square feet of projects in his career. Murray is a certified aging in place specialist, CAPS, with the experience and continued education for providing the best solutions for accessibility and safety in homes with older family members. This in turn led to a creation of Forever Home, whose goal it is to provide boomers the opportunity to stay where you love and thrive where you live. Murray, who has been featured on CBS, Fox, NBC, and ABC is providing businesses in the housing sector the tools to pivot, rethink, and reinvent the future of housing. And then a little bit about uh, Dexter. Dexter started in-term health care of Bellevue at the end of 2018 after more than 20 years of corporate experience. He wants to build a business for the long term that will do good for the community. You might also remember that he ran for Bellevue City Council in 2021. Dexter's previous experience was in energy telecom and e-commerce. He has his MBA from MIT and an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering. Dexter lives in Bellevue with his wife and his three children. So I love the panel conversation because it gives an opportunity uh, for my listeners to get to know a little bit about both of you before we get into your individual segments and talk about your individual business. So Aaron, let's go ahead and start out with you. What life experience brought you in to your line of work? Thanks for asking, Tina. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I knew as a junior in high school, as I was enjoying a drafting class and not enjoying calculus, but enjoying every other math, that I might want to be in architecture school. So I went to UW for that. Um, with regard to aging in place, actually, the life experience was watching my grandmother go through osteoporosis and Alzheimer's in a split level home in Portland, Oregon uh, at 22 at UW. Wasn't ready to talk about maybe grandma's medical or hygiene, but I saw that her house was broken with regard to 
how it can be used after you're 50 or if you have any kind of disability. So that was really formative for me when it comes to what we're doing today with ADM and Forever Home. Yeah, and it's it, it's so great to see people from their own uh, personal life experience, especially when it comes uh, in your loved ones where you've gone through something that's brought you in to your line of work in um, the, the way that you've shared, Aaron, because uh, that shows that you really have passion behind what you're doing and you've got the experience of going through it uh, with a loved one and it makes you that more that much uh, better at what you do. Uh, Dexter, what about you? What life experience brought you into your line of work? So, uh, you know, ever since I was young, I've always wanted to have my own business, um, just like my parents. My parents have three businesses be between the two of them. Um, and I've always, uh, but I've wanted to do something that when I retire at some age, I can look back and say, I did something good. And I did something great. Um, my wife is a nurse. Uh, she's a registered nurse. And so very naturally, this area of helping people um, with care in their homes, whether it's um, uh, a caregiver support uh, and whatnot, um, you know, was a, was a very good area for us. Uh, there's a realization for me that you know, everybody has about 45 or 50 years in their career. Right from the time you're 20 to your till you're 65 or 70, more if you're lucky. Um, and I went past the halfway mark on mine, and I looked around and said, "What do I want to do with the rest of it?" Right. Yeah. Um, so it led me to do something like this, um, you know. And very much like Aaron, I've I've seen how you know uh, the experience of my, with my grandmother. Um, she had a slip and a fall, which seemed very innocent, but um, she became catatonic. Um, after that, and for the next two years, she was unmoving in her bed and required uh, caregivers to care for her. And we were, our family is very thankful for those that did uh, care for her through those those times, right? Um, yeah. It was not a very easy you know, experience. Uh, you know, I, I went to visit her, I held her hand, I talked to her, and she could not move, but she, her tears were coming down her eyes. Oh, my right? God. So, I mean, you know, um, but so people sometimes are in these vulnerable and difficult situations and they need the compassion and care. Absolutely. Passion, um, uh, compassion, care, expertise, and really navigating them into the best solution for them uh, where they're at. So excited uh, again for both of your individual interviews where we're going to go into at a deeper level of how both of you are supporting our community through your businesses. Uh, Aaron, in what way have you shifted your business from what your original plan was? Yeah, so that's kind of where the, the launch of Forever Home comes out of ADM architecture. So I've been doing architecture for 25 years since I graduated UW. And although I enjoy the commercial building and the tenant improvements and all of that, um, the passion part for me is on the residential side. Even when we design custom homes, you're really creating a dream for somebody. And it's a very large financial investment. Um, and so for me to start to recognize that actually spec builders don't think much about anybody over 40, right? Mm -hmm. Most of their product is first and second time home buyers. And so I was seeing that even though we've been speaking on stage once a month for 13 years about aging in place, which is why our phone rings at our architecture firm, that not a lot of people are doing what I've been doing for a long time. And now that aging in place and just, I think actually quite honestly, Tina, coming out of, you know, Floyd's death and DEI starts to show up, right? We've learned some things coming out of COVID and lots of other interesting social disnorms, yes. <laughs> right? And so universal design and um, accessibility has really gained in its, in its volume through DEI just because equity and inclusion includes them. And so it's really leveraged a voice, I think. And so what I used to be doing that no one had heard of before is now becoming mainstream language, but 95% of our housing stock is spec built. So we really need to look at how to modify our home. Kids that are born today might live to 150, but the house hasn't changed to accommodate that from a spec builder perspective. So we have a ton of stock to work on uh -huh. and that's why we started Forever Home. Yeah, that's great. And, and what a great thing to really be uh, the launch, one of the first in a need, um, something that's needed 
uh, for sure. So uh, Dexter, in what way have you shifted your business from your original plan? I think the biggest curveball in our industry was the onset of COVID um, in 2020. And it, um, it forced us to adopt a lot more technology um, to be able to uh, recruit, onboard, uh, train, and supervise caregivers who mostly work out in the field. Um, it's, a, it's forced us to move all of our medical records um, to, cloud, to cloud sources. It, um, uh, and, you know, we've adopted policies and procedures, right, uh, during this time to not, not, you know, to protect both our caregivers and our clients um, uh, from, you know, from, from potential, you know, potentially uh, contagious illnesses, right, including COVID which is the main one. Um, I think that's, that's been the biggest thing uh, we've had to ad adapt to. Um, um, you know, I, I think, you know, we're not, we're relatively young as a business is concerned, right? And so we're still continuing to grow and change um, and go in, you know, there are several different areas that we haven't really realized, um, you know, where, where we need to be, right? So <laughs> we, we have, um, you know, interim healthcare uh, across the country, uh, if you look at it, we're not just engaged in home care, we're also engaged in um, home health, hospice, and staffing. Uh, however, our office here in Bellevue is going to be focused on home care and staffing, okay. right? Um, uh, for, you know, Washington State's what's called the Certificate of Need State for Medicare certification, meaning uh, it's not that easy to get <laughs> Medicare oh, certified. Okay. Um, however, we, there's a lot of opportunity in these two areas, and that's our focus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, COVID, absolutely. What a huge uh, impact having in your industry when working with the elderly, but what a lot of great things to get things in place and procedures and things like you were talking about that um, is going to be great moving forward in, in the future and protecting uh, our seniors and as you said, the caregivers as well. So Aaron, to what do you credit your success in business? If there was one thing that made you successful, what would that biggest thing be? Uh, tenacity. <laughs> uh, tenacity. Stick with itness, which mm -hmm. is not a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think most of us entrepreneurs have learned way more than I ever learned in college through some failure in real life. Um, I actually went through the housing crash as an investor. Uh, and so lots of lessons. And you know, my father's a, an MBA from Purdue. And he reminds me that, hey, it's okay. You got your master's at the School of Hard Knocks and your PhD at Skin Knee University. So, oh my gosh, that's you know, awesome. quite honestly, it's 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 the failures that have taught me the things that now lead to my success. Um, and my first boss was my grandfather, actually, um, oh. and spending time on his Christmas tree farm so I could go travel with baseball teams in high school and I don't know, to, to have your work ethic leader and moral compass at 16 be somebody who was a teenager in the Great Depression and yeah. tears napkins in half to save money. Like that was my first real teacher and, and that has served me very, very well. Oh, that is beautiful. And yeah, tenacity, anything great, it doesn't become great overnight it's you, you, and you have to have confidence um, that what's happening underneath the surface. And I say underneath the surface, because I think of the Chinese, the story of the Chinese bamboo tree, it takes five years for it to break ground and it knows, grows 90 feet in six weeks. Um, what's happening underneath the surface that you can't see, that's what you have to have confidence in. And you have to continue to water and fertilize your bamboo tree representing your business or your life. And then as Aaron says, is getting through and knowing that failures are going to be part of the process, but through those failures is really where we learn. And without the failures, we would be exactly where we're at because growth happens through the failures and you can't be successful without growth. And that means failures is part of the process. Thank you so much for that, Aaron. Uh, Dexter, what about you? What do you credit your success in business? <laughs> I think Aaron gave some of the, the great answers and that I would have similar ones, but maybe I'll tell a few different stories. I think one of the things my father taught me um, is the importance of long-term relationships in business. Um, when I was a teenager, I haggled with the computer store to buy a hard drive 
and haggled such a great price. But when my dad came over to pay for it, he paid full price. And I asked him why. I just negotiated this down. What are you doing? And he said, well, you know, um, this relationship you're going to have with the store owner here is not just about buying this one hard drive. Yeah. It's a, it's about when you need something for your computer in the future, you're going to go, you're going to be able to go to him. Right. He's in, he's doing this to make a bit of money. Right. And you're doing this to get the piece of technology that you need. Right. But this is not the only time you will need it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, he, it was a valuable lesson. I still remember it. It's a small thing. Amounts were not very big, uh -huh. right? Uh, but the lesson was very invaluable. It's about um, uh, establishing good relationships, strong relationships. It's about uh, truly being sincerely meaning well for each other, right? Um, we translate that into our business in the caregiver world, you know, with how professionally we treat our caregivers. Caregivers in the healthcare industry are not, are, they're, they're, they're the bedrock, Right, um, they're sort of not at the top, but uh, they're they're the strong foundation that it all rests on, and we believe that when we pre treat them professionally, they treat our clients the same way. Yeah, that is a great a great advice and a great story, Dexter. And and yeah, when you um, think back and look at life, yes, there's there's big defining moments that make us who we are, but there's a lot of small defining moments that compounded. And when you embrace all of those small moments, can become big defining moments in a positive or negative, depending on how um, you engage through that process. So um, I love that, and I love how both of you are uh, able to bring some some stories in to our panel conversation. So thank. Thank you uh, so much for that. So coming up next on the Money, Money Hour, housing for the new longevity, Aaron Murphy of ADM Architecture and Forever Home right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 19th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions, or I can connect you with the two guests that I have on the show. Please reach out by going to themoneyhour.com. And now in studio, Aaron Murphy of ADM Aldercoacher and Forever Home Housing for the New Longevity right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Uh, Aaron, again, thank you for coming into studio. Oh gosh, so fun to be back. It's been a joy already. <laughs> yeah, love it. And uh, really excited to have a conversation uh, with you. And I want to start out with how did you start on your entrepreneurial journey? We talked a little bit in the panel conversation um, on uh, what experience brought you in, but share a little bit more on your, on your journey. Sure. So, you know, to anybody who's read the e-myth, the myth of the entrepreneur, that's a good example of me. Um, I worked for a probably 25 person architecture firm in Leshi in Seattle at the time and really wanted to be the guy that owned the firm. Uh, and so you get your you get your license and your stamp as a young architect and think that, you know, you have new ideas or you could do it better or you want to be in control or what you know whatever drives you that way um moved to Kitsap County actually our firm is in Paulsbo now outside of Kit uh outside of Seattle and we're a six-person firm so uh, but I was a solopreneur for a very long time probably nine of our you know 14 years before I needed a personal assistant and then I needed help drafting and then yeah. I needed right um, and so coming out of the recession, and that was definitely a part of the exercise. We talked about that in the previous segment that uh, I was flipping and lease optioning. I did, went and did real estate full time. But unfortunately, I started in November of 05. So I didn't make it out of the arms and get through the yeah. refis and <laughs> get into the fixed rates. So, you know, tons of lessons along that journey. But I've, you know, I've been unemployable since I was. 32. Yeah, that is, that is the, the best or unemployable. And yeah. most want to own the firm, but 
very, very few take the steps and are able to do what's needed to move forward into uh, being an entrepreneur and being the leader um, of, of business for sure. So what are you seeing as an emerging, emerging trend in architecture? Yeah, we barely touched on that a minute ago as far as the residential side. Obviously, there's plenty going on commercial as far as being green or being carbon neutral or right at the commercial building level. Uh, but I'm seeing on the residential side that the voice is getting much louder than it has in the previous decade about the need for those of us 50 plus mm -hmm. to do something for our house because I mean, and think about it, World War II, right, coming out with a GI Bill, the first people that were kind of getting into home buyer and American dream and, um, you know, houses are pretty much built the same way as they were then. Yeah. Um, but our longevity, I mean, you might not live past 47, you know, in 1920. Uh -huh. well, now you might live to 147 if you're born today. So the need for housing to adjust to what we've already experienced in technology and medicine advance. Yeah. Now home needs to advance. Absolutely. Home everything, advance. everything needs to uh, advance. It yes, it does. And, and there's tons of R&D products out there. There's a spoon that will offset the shaking of your hand for Parkinson's and you can eat cereal with milk. Wow. Okay. But who's, who's disseminating all the silos of information and looking at the holistic answer to designing home to last as long as you do. Yeah. Uh, the, well, um, well said and, and great need um, uh, for sure. So why did you choose aging in place as your residential niche? Personal passion, uh, yeah. you know, to see grandma go through that when, when she retired, in Portland, she was five foot nine, traveling the world, playing cards, playing bridge at a master's level. And Did she play canasta? Huh? Did she play canasta? I don't recall any. Yeah, any I've, I did. I I say that because every time I um, think of cards and um, uh, seniors, my grandma was a big canasta player. Lots of <laughs> lots of memories of hours of canasta. But anyways, go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and enjoying retirement. Um, but she went from five foot nine to five foot two. And, you know, by the time I graduated college, she was trapped in a hospital bed in the living room of a split level home and didn't know Carl, my grandfather's name because of dementia. So uh, like I said earlier, I, the house, a split level home is a disaster when it comes to aging. There's seven or eight stairs to the front door. There's seven or eight stairs to the laundry room. There's seven or eight stairs to every shower. Yeah. It just, it doesn't make sense. And there's lots of things in every era of housing that did not quite consider all of the pieces of aging in place. Yeah. So what are the most common requests um, are you seeing for safety? modifications yeah I would imagine so, a lot in the bath bathroom tub. Yeah, yeah, quite, yeah it's kind of in the order of dampness right <laughs> okay you know bathroom uh yeah. even to the point like a spec house has a two foot six door and the door swings into a five by eight room in a bathroom well if you fall in the bathroom you just cost the emt 30 seconds in an emergency getting the door off wow yeah. maybe you should have a pocket door Okay, but yeah, you're right that, you know, moisture creates <laughs> creates accidents. And so bathrooms first, uh, trying to look at a zero threshold, a roll-in type shower scenario, uh -huh. um, bars around the places that you're trying to maneuver while wet. Uh, and then laundry and kitchen are, are the two that kind of come in equally after, after the bathroom as far okay. as where we can keep you safe and keep you home longer, which... You know, last time I saw an AARP poll, it was 89% of people want to stay where their pet, where their garden, where their memories are. Yeah, yeah. And then as, you know, we get into uh, my next conversation and really having when you've got the care that can come into the home, so but you need to have the home um, uh, 
adjusted to be able to accommodate. Right. Otherwise, you know, even with the home care is you're not going to be able to stay where you're at. Well, it's harder so, on the, yeah. It's harder on the caregiver yeah. not to have a house that works for you. Exactly. Yeah. So why did you rebrand to forever home for your new business? Yeah. So um, we're still kind of in the ramp up and startup phase for that launch. Uh, what I've learned over 13 years of speaking on stage once a month, you know, I started doing that at Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions Club, Chamber. And then eventually I was speaking at, you know, the home show in Seattle and then uh -huh. American Society on Aging in Chicago. And then we were hired to go do a TV show in Tokyo. I wonder so, if years ago, I actually saw you. On I think, yeah, I think, I, think I don't I know did. if you waved or we shook hands after. It was like the 2013 Seattle Home Show. And they oh had- Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I yeah. just literally put that connection together Not as funny. when you mentioned, oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, that's go ahead. Hilarious. <laughs> that, yeah. is. <laughs> that was me with, you know, maybe a little lower hairline. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've been doing it for quite a while. Um, and so Forever Home really is me looking at the B2B space. Okay. I've been speaking B2C for long enough uh -huh. that reticular activators at Christmas parties and our phone rings at ADM yeah. Architecture. What I'm realizing though is my parents and every other boomer are, you know, going from 65 to 70 plus. Um you know, I have a I have a father-in-law who was born the day after Pearl Harbor. So that'd be the high end or whatever that is, 81, 82. Uh -huh. So I'm right in the middle of it. You know, I am the epitome of the sandwich generation. I have four teenagers who think I'm an idiot. And I have four <laughs> parents that won't listen to me. I'm, oh my I'm approaching 50 and I've never felt dumber. Just ask all the people around me. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah, and so it's just fascinating, right? I'm getting full circle of life information right now. And yeah. What I'm just seeing is that I actually need to go train a bunch of people how I did what I did, B2B. Yes. I need occupational therapists. I need remodelers who take our online course and get certified and can go do what I do and be the expert in their community so that we can help 200,000 people, not the 20 people I help per year at ADM. Absolutely. Well, and I, I say too, for um, if you're listening to the show today and your product and or service that you offer is B2C, business to consumer, uh, a lot of times, a uh, majority of people in those types of industry focus directly to the consumer where how you really make a difference is what Aaron is saying here. And you can help millions versus thousands of clients is go B2B, finding those business professionals that are doing business today, they can support you today, and they need you today to take care of the, their clients because they don't offer the product and or service that you have. And that's how we can really level up and help more people by getting connected B2B. So that's great, Aaron, that you're doing all of that, um, building your B2B or business to business relationships. So what is your vision and mission for Forever Home? Yeah, so my vision is to train as many business owners how to help as many 50 plus consumers in the United States with staying at their home safer, independent, autonomous, and staying where they love as long as is safely possible. And like yeah. I said, we're going to start our two verticals as remodelers and OTs who do home assessments. And we know we need an occupational therapist. Okay. Universal design is design that just works for everybody. It uh -huh. worked for your granddaughter. It worked for my grandmother. Okay. And that's probably 70% of good design. And it just disappears. We're not making houses in the hospitals, right? Yeah. And then the other 30% is specific to what you have or what you might get based on your medical history. Mm -hmm. We know we all need resources. I bring in the OT. I believe that more brains at the table make a better solution. I want the in-home caregiver who you're going to have on next, Dexter, to have a, a staff that can come talk about how this is all going to work together. But I have to go train the trainer right now. You know, it's kind of like my wife is a is a vice principal of a middle school. After 18 years of teaching AP high school Spanish, she wanted to help more. And so you move into administration so that you can teach the teachers what you've learned and they can teach the students. Same idea. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, brilliant. So why do businesses in the 50 plus consumer market need what you have to offer at the forever, at forever home? 
because <laughs> we're in unprecedented times, right? Yeah. We have more people 65 plus, and we're going to live longer than we've ever lived by a long shot because of medical and technological advance. Yeah. But you can't know unless we're out there disseminating data and sharing with you the best information, which three products should I recommend for home monitor monitoring, right? Maybe dad doesn't like the big brother idea and maybe we just have a key fob on his chain that we can see his keys are moving around the house. There's a dozen versions. When I went to Tokyo in 2014, Tina, there were 14 ways to get in and out of a shotgun seat in a car between Toyota and Honda at the International Home Health Expo. Wow. Why? Because Japan is 15 years older than we are per capita. They had to start guinea pigging all of this trial and error R&D. Okay, so are we looking to other countries for answers? So we would disseminate the data, you the remodeler, the OT, the home designer, you come get certified with us and then you go out there and you get to be the best person you can be as a business owner and help more people. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what other B2B options uh, will you offer businesses who want to learn and capture market share in the longevity economy housing sector next year in 2023 at Forever Home? That's a great question. So we're going to have an online coursework. Uh, okay. And you'll be able to do it by module or groups of three or all 12 and it takes a year, you know, we'll work through that. Um, you can also have one on one coaching from us just depending on the price point. The other thing that we're going to offer when we get into home designers is that we have stock plans for aging in place and there's not a good website for that yet and we're going to build it. So then if you are a home designer in Atlanta and you want to have ideas on how to design a house for somebody, we will have stock plans available if you're on subscription with us. And yeah. the, the idea is that I'll cut through the white noise for you. We'll give you the best info and you go out and do your job. Oh, so exciting. I'm the local expert, which is what we need more of. Absolutely. So I have to wrap up here in less than a minute, but I want you to answer one or two questions, one okay. of these two, one or the other. Uh, what would you tell your 18 year old self or what would you tell your 70 year old self? Love it. I tell my 18 year old self plan to fail, enjoy it, but take notes. Yep. Uh, I tell my 70 year old self, you sure as hell better have thought through what Aaron does for a living and planned to not be a burden on your children and be willing to have these discussions. Please don't be in denial. Uh, aging is the best kept secret unless you like the alternative. We have yeah. to talk about it. So be willing and then you can be proactive. That is great. Great advice for the youngster and great advice for preparing uh, for your golden years. Erin, thank you so much again for joining me on my show. Great information. And I'm so happy that I could share it with my listeners. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And if you want to connect with Aaron, you can go to the moneyhour.com and I will get you connected with him and all the amazing stuff uh, that he is doing. Coming up next on the Money Hour in home care, Dexter Borby of Interim Healthcare of Bellevue, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, November 19th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere. You can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. Uh, now in studio, I have Dexter Borby of Interim Healthcare of Bellevue, in-home care, right? here on 1150 AM KKNW. Dexter, great to have you. Well, thank you for having me here, Tina. It's a pleasure. Yeah, very excited to have a conversation. And what a great combination to have uh, you and Aaron together on this show and uh, really just a great service that you're providing uh, to our seniors in our community. So very exciting. So Dexter, uh, what does in-term health care do? Uh, yeah, so we do uh, what's called in-home care. 
uh, which is caregiver support for people who live in their homes. Um, our caregivers provide, um, like I bucket the three areas called personal care, which is bathing, dressing, grooming, continence support, toileting, uh, transfers, ambulation support. Um, we also provide homemaker services, right? So because the same people who suffer from these problems will need help with meal preparation, with laundry, with light housekeeping, with getting errands done, uh, with groceries, trips to the doctor. Um, and they also provide companionship because people need to have um, you know, some people who may have trouble with some of their primary functions might not be going out uh, to do what the things that they used to love, might not be going out for walks, might not be going out to the library as much as they used to. And our caregivers help them do that. Oh, that's wonderful. And what a great shout out, because that is one of the core things that you need. It may not be, um, people might not think about it as much, but it's definitely a, a core of companionship of what you need to um, be as healthy, healthy as you can um, as you're, um, uh, as you're, you're getting into those next years. So what does in-home care look like, Dexter? Okay. Oh, so in-home care basically is having a caregiver come support you or uh, your loved one um, at your home. Our caregivers are all licensed by the Department of Health, uh, either certified home care aides or certified nursing assistants. Um, we, of course, vet them, uh, drug screens, criminal background checks. Um, they're all our employees, so they're licensed, bonded, and insured. Mm -hmm. um, and we so we, we start with an assessment. Uh, we assess the, the person's needs, uh, what their needs are for in-home care, what areas do they have difficulty in, what areas do they, we need, they need support in. And we create a care plan. Um, on the first day of care, we do what's called a meet and greet, uh, where somebody from the office um, will introduce the family to the caregiver and the caregiver to the family. As you might imagine, families might be might have a little um, wariness about meeting, having somebody new in their home. And to be honest, the caregivers are a little wary about what kind of home they're walking into as well. That makes sense. Yes. So we do that. Uh, we go over the care plan together. So everyone, everyone's on the same page. And we also make adjustments when we learn something that's different from when they discharge at the hospital, something's changed. Um, we make adjustments to the care plan. Um, we typically call at the end of the first day day uh, to ask the family how this, did the shift go with the caregiver, right? We believe if the first shift goes well, the rest of the shifts will go well. Um, we also call the caregiver to ask how it went and if they observed anything. <laughs> uh, so we like to, we, because we have to provide services in other people's homes, we don't control the environment in which the services are provided. So we try to have processes and procedures that allow us to effectively deliver that, uh, you know, the effective care yeah. uh, for people. Yeah, you have to equally support your clients and your team that supports those clients. So I love how uh, you're making sure that everybody is uh, happy with with the uh, with the setup. So how is it different than a nursing home? Um, yes, I mean, the, uh, I think the term nursing home, I think now is, um, it's been broken up. I think there, what we used to call the nursing home is now more specialized, right? There's different types. You have independent living, yeah. which is mostly independent people who, um, who may get support in terms of, you know, somebody comes to change your linens uh, you know, every so often, then there's a kitchen downstairs that makes your meals. Uh, there's assisted living, um, and then there's memory care, right? Assisted living is where they have. So um, the difference is that our in-home care service provides the care for the client where they are, right? So basically, um, where they are can be in their own private home. We also provide services in senior housing. We can provide um, uh, home care. Our caregivers can go into independent living communities okay. so that the residents can get over maybe what might be a temporary condition such, such as recovering from surgery, right? Or a chronic condition, but they need occasional support for, like, you know, being able to go to the doctor, you know, every, you know twice a week or go yeah. to chemotherapy, right? And having a caregiver who can help assist them, uh, dress them up, bathe them, you know, get get them uh, get them going. Um, and in assisted living, we, you know, we sometimes sometimes perform what's called a supplemental 72-hour observation. So sometimes when people come home from the hospital, they may need to be observed for 72 hours, right? And as, you know, as great as our assisted living communities are, they don't always have the resources to have a caregiver just sit one-on-one -on -one with uh, yeah. one resident because you know, they have the, the, the staff there have to serve all the residents. Absolutely. So we can come in to supplement their staff uh, and provide, you know, I, uh, that kind of, you know, um, uh, temporary care, uh, additional care. 
Okay, that is wonderful. So let's talk about uh, insurance because um, it's it, it's not uh, it's it's not an inexpensive. I mean, you you it's you have to pay for this mm -hmm. service, and so how does insurance come in to assist, or does it? Um, yeah, so that's a very good point. I think um, one of the things we often get asked is, does insurance cover it? And regular health insurance does not. Yeah. Right. What covers this is long-term care insurance. Mm -hmm. And after starting in this industry, I now recommend to all my friends, yeah. go find a long-term care insurance agent and get yourself a policy mm -hmm. because we're all getting older. Yeah. Um, uh, we're all getting older. We all will need help as we age and we all will live longer. So yeah. we want to be healthy and we want to be safe as long as possible. You know, as, and as Aaron pointed out, majority of older adults prefer to stay in their own home, mm -hmm. right? Because that's where that's where their memories are. That's where their children grew up. That's where they where they where they made their accomplishments. Um, uh, so long-term care insurance helps cover it. Um, Medicaid also covers it as well as uh, uh, Veterans Administration benefits, but they're offered to a limited extent. Okay. Right, there's a, it's not not um, you know, because you know when you're talking about the state, the state does not have infinite resources, <laughs> yeah. right? So they have to prioritize. They have to also manage uh, and get care for people with the resources they have. Yeah, we um, all go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Dexter. So no, so I would highly recommend two things. One is you know when you make your long term plans, financial plans, um, you know, uh, I run into p children of clients who always tell us, oh, I. I you know, I need, I need to make sure I talk to my financial advisor for when I'm going to be there yes. um, in the future and to make sure I'm planning for that. Um, and then, you know, look into long-term care insurance because I, I think that the demand will just grow. Um, we are, there is a book, I mean, my nerd side is coming out. Uh, there's a book entitled Who Will Care For Us? It's written by an economist. Uh, he was looking at the long-term care industry and noting this, the big bifurcation in, in uh, between supply and demand. Um, the demand for uh, in-home care is increasing very rapidly. 50% of it in the United States is provided by uh, family members, right, uh -huh. in an unpaid fashion. Um, but the supply of caregivers is not growing at the same pace. Yeah. So if anything, to your point on supply and demand earlier in the show, uh, things that are in uh, short supply but in high demand tend to get more expensive. So get the long-term care insurance plan. I would recommend it. Yeah, and a, a great best advice because uh, my mother-in-law, I had long-term care insurance and thank goodness. And uh, she started using it just when she fell and hurt her wrist. And I was like, how does she have a caregiver? Nothing's wrong with her. But she did, you know, so she wasn't, and then uh, she stayed in her home as long as we could. She's in memory care now, but um, yeah, a great investment uh, for yourself and a great investment for your loved ones, because what a position to put them in um, when you get to that and you, you're not able to, to, um, uh, to pay for it. So what kind of caregivers uh, are you hiring? Um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, as a Medicare, as a, as a Department of Health uh, certified home care agency, right, our caregivers have to be, um, you know, have to follow regulations. So we, our caregivers are either certified uh, home care aides or certified nursing assistants. Um, we do have, to, we, we do need to vet them because, you know, a lot of our reputation depends on the experience that the client has with these caregivers in their home. Yeah. Right. So we want to make sure we are sending people who are qualified, who are uh, trained and capable of providing the care to your point around expertise. Uh, but we also want to make sure that they behave properly, that we do a 50 state criminal background check. We have the full um, panel drug screen. We require two positive references. Uh, so most of them that go into the home are already experienced in providing care uh, in some other setting before. Um, uh, they're required to have a first aid CPR card, right? And we do orient or they're required to have a food worker safety card because they're handling food for clients. Uh, so those are some of the just the paper requirements uh, for the caregiver. But what I really tell people in my office is we look for three things that are extremely important in everybody, right? Um, it's integrity, reliability, and compassion at the end of the day, yeah. right? Uh, integrity means you'll do the right thing even when no one is looking. Yeah. And for many of our caregivers who are working in the home of a vulnerable individual, and some of them live alone, right? Mm -hmm. Besides the caregivers, just themselves, we need to have caregivers who will do the right thing when, when things happen, right? We try to test for that in different scenarios. Um, reliability is pretty important because the people that need the care, they need yeah. the care. Absolutely. It's not like a facility where you have multiple other staff members. Very often it's one-on-one. -on -one. 
Yeah. Right. So when the caregiver doesn't arrive, the person doesn't get the care. Yeah. So we need people who will be there when their clients need it. And the third is the most important is the compassion. Mm-hmm. Right. The compassion, we define compassion as an active form of caring. You know, sympathy and empathy are a little passive. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, you're feeling you're, you're going through that. Yeah. And it's important. It's a key step. It's a key, uh, you know, key part of this foundation. Uh, compassion is going the next step and saying, let me help you with your problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, somebody has had a hip surgery, can't get out from bed. And, you know, then you think about all the scenarios that where you can't, uh, where if you were in that situation, you wouldn't be able to do certain things, yeah. right? Like yeah. going to the bathroom, like making your own meals. It's like very simple things we take for granted every day, um, but suddenly it's very difficult, right? And we want caregivers who who think through that. Yeah. Um, at Interim Healthcare, we, you know, our four pillars are mind, body, family, and spirit. And many times when people think about in-home care, they think about the body component. How do I dress this person? How do you bathe them? How do you mm-hmm. help them to the bathroom? How do you take care of their, you know, uh, how do you transfer them to a wheelchair? But there's the, the, the other parts are equally important. The mind is how engaged are they? Mm-hmm. Are they having conversation? Are they reading? Are they doing crossword puzzles together? And sometimes these are enjoyable things. Spirit doesn't have to be, it, it's not really um, uh, religious, right? Can be, but it doesn't have to be. It's basically their 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 desire, their will, their joy of life, mm-hmm. right? Um, we had the client before just took, had one week, uh, one day of care for uh, each week. But the moment the caregiver arrives, she has she's on her walker, she has her bag on her shoulder and her lipstick on, and it's ready to go out because that one day oh, is the day yeah. she gets to go out with her caregiver, oh. um, right? She has difficulty driving otherwise. Um, and family. Family is an extremely important component of caregiving. Uh, so we also try to share resources with family and, you know, how to manage diabetes, how to, how to you know, congestive heart failure. We know that um, our, our caregivers can, you know, depending on what the clients ask us for, the caregivers may or may not always be there. And some of the care is also provided by family members. So we try to share resources uh, so that the family is aware of some of the considerations. Yeah. Yeah. A a lot of skills. Absolutely. And um, a certain personality type that not only is compassionate, but compassionate for seniors uh, because it's a whole different thing. And so finding those um, unique people that really have the love and passion to take care of the elderly. And so what a great thing, Dexter, that you go through uh, a substantial process of not just the skills, but also the desire and the passion to be taking care of our elderly. So what type of help do um, are your caregivers providing? You shared a little uh, bit, but. Yes, I know. I, I did share a little bit already. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot. I think the primary reasons that the caregivers typically are there is to provide what we call personal care. Um, and the industry does regard them, uh, has a term for them, activities of daily living, right? Um, these are bathing, dressing, uh, grooming, toileting, uh, ambulation transfer, and feeding, right? And these are things that we do every day. Usually when I give a presentation, I ask, how many of you did these things today? And people will say, I, I did, right? And I also ask, what if, you, what if there was one or two of them you can't do? What if you can't go to the bathroom? What if you can't dress yourself, right? Your life would be severely affected and different. And that's a, that illustrates a little bit about the difference our caregivers make. Right. It's it's everyday things we take for granted because we're able to do it. But the moment you can't, your life is affected. And if you can't do that for a long period of time, your life will be severely affected. Yeah. Um, our caregivers also help with what we call the IADLs, the incidental activities of daily living. So this is what the industry defines as activities that are not as essential as the first set, but quite essential in the long term. And these yeah. are your, your your housekeeping, your meal preparation, laundry, um, transportation, groceries. Um, financial management is one of them, but our caregivers will not touch anything financial. Okay. Okay. We instruct the caregivers not to touch anything. Uh, that you know, there are financial advisors for that, yes, <laughs> right, and powers of attorney that that mm-hmm. will help do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, there's the other pieces which are around companionship, around activities, around keeping the person, you know, the clients engaged and active and safe, yes. right? Um, Plankton asked, uh, 
helping Playing them with their puzzles. <laughs> yes. Even just, just encouraging. We have caregivers that will do the physical therapy along with the client because yeah. it's easier to do exercise when somebody's doing it with you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, that's, that's right. amazing. So let's talk about the difference um, between hiring a, care, a caregiving service like your company uh, versus just hiring a caregiver online. Okay, individual caregivers. I mean, nothing against individual caregivers. The you know, majority of them are great and caring people. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain things that we offer um, as an agency. As I mentioned earlier on, we develop a care plan and we supervise our caregivers. Um, and, to, and we you know, keep track of uh, developments in, in the person's well-being and care. Um, we also provide, we also ensure our caregivers. So one of the things that, that happens is if you're hiring somebody privately and the caregiver has an injury on the job, uh, for example, either a needle stick or pulls their back, um, then how would that be taken care of, right? We yeah. have workers' compensation insurance. We have uh, uh, liability insurance, professional and general liability insurance. We have umbrella insurance for, for auto for when our caregivers need to transport clients, right? We take care of payroll taxes, Right. But the, I think the other thing is that when you're with an agency, you have a whole team of caregivers behind you. Yes. So in, in terms of scheduling, in terms of having somebody come in when your regular caregiver can't be there, uh -huh. um, that is, that, uh, that's something we can we, that we help with. Right. Um, and then we also try to be a good resource to all our clients. And you know, to men, you, as you mentioned, we, we belong to uh, it takes a village to care. For yeah. people, um, you know, we if clients need certain resources like, um, you know, specialty pharmacies or uh, need to be referred to you know, home health or sometimes even hospice services, we like we try to help the families uh, find those resources or even if it's to move out and uh, into another place of living, we, we try to help families with, uh, you know, figure that out because we know that it's sometimes very daunting. Uh, for family yeah. members when when mom or dad suddenly has a turn in their health yeah right? yeah uh, we try to make it as easy on the rest of the family as we as much as we can as much as their knowledge great right. dexter well i i really enjoyed my conversation uh with you it's time to wrap up the show but really quickly uh, how do people connect with you oh thank you so much tina and how do they connect with you, Dexter? Oh, how would they connect with me? Um, they can give us, they can give our, uh, our office a call, uh, 425-274-3720. They can visit our website, uh, www.interimhealthcare.com slash Bellevue um, And, and um, you, you, there's a contact us option there. There's a chat option there uh, for them to reach us. Wonderful. And of course, you can go to themoneyhour.com to get in contact with either one of my uh, guests, expert in their space and making a difference in our community. Uh, shout out and a thank you to both of them. This is your host, or I'm your host, Tina Mitchell, local mortgage expert, signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and your weekend. I look forward to talking more money with you next weekend, right here on 1150 AM KKNW.